It's a tall task to make the playoffs in the NFL. It's even tougher to win your own division. So today, we're going to look at three division winners from 2022 and lay out why they might miss the playoffs in 2023. You might be able to guess two of these teams, but I guarantee you that third team will shock you. Find out on today's show. What's going on, friends? Welcome back to Forward Progress here on the Hammer Betting Network and powered by Pinnacle Sports. Before we get started today, I want to talk to you guys quickly about Pinnacle. Pinnacle is the world's sharpest sports book and available to bettors in Ontario. Find out what the best bettors have known for decades. Pinnacle is where the best bettors play. Must be 90 plus in Ontario. And please play responsibly, not available in the U.S. Guys, today I am joined alongside Eric Eager, VP of Sumer Sports. And we got a banger video for you today. We're going to talk about some division winners last year who might miss the playoffs this year. And to get one out of the way to start, because I think there's one team that everyone's already thinking about, and it's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're 8-9 last year. Uh, we, we know what happened to them, right? They lost Tom Brady. Their uh, regular season win total is lined at 6.5 right now, just under minus 142. The over is at plus 120. But let's just get them out of the way right right, right off the start. Eric, what are your thoughts on the Buccaneers? Yeah, the party's over, right? They're 13-2 to to win that division on Pinnacle. Like, it's it's over, right? $75 million in dead cap, 35 of it is Brady. They lose Donovan Smith, the left tackle. Um, you know, they they you know they have some defections beyond that even. And, you know, they they change offensive coordinators. It's, it, they bring in Baker Mayfield. This thing's over for them. I think they'll be picking in the top five next year. And I think Jason Light did a really good job this offseason in sort of not – trying to extend the window a little bit more, the party's over. It's time for them to rebuild. And as such, you know, it's pretty clear that they're not going to win their own division or make the playoffs this year. Exactly. The cops showed up. Everyone's got to scramble out and run out. Unfortunately, it didn't end for a Super Bowl with them, but they got one in that stretch. They must be happy. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think it's a stretch to say at all that they're going to miss the playoffs. And I think it's, like, as their win total suggests, it's more likely than not. Moving on to another team. I think a lot of people who watch our content and watch our content a lot last year will know this team. Uh, this team notoriously because we talked about them way too much it was the minnesota vikings 13 and 4 last year the big thing was that they got lucky right there i think that you mentioned their point differential negative point differential uh, got incredibly lucky so their uh win total line at eight and a half right now the sharps are on top of that over minus 123 under plus 104 so give us a little paint the tapestry as to why you think the vikings will miss the playoffs this year yeah, 11 and 0 in one score games until they got to the playoffs and then they lost uh, at home by 7 at the Giants. Um, you know, they bring back Kirk Cousins, but a lot of defections. Patrick Peterson's gone, uh Zedaria Smith is gone, uh, Eric Hendricks, a stalwart of this team is gone, Adam Thielen gone as well, Dalvin Cook just re was released. There's a lot of defections. They brought some players in. I don't know if they're going to be terrible. The win total's 8 and a half. Um, but they're there are you know three to one to win their own division a year after winning 13 games. That's just a, a testament to how sharp the market is in the NFL um, year year in year out. So when I look at this team, I think that you know in the NFC it's a, you know basically a better than 50 percent chance we don't see them uh, in the playoffs. I make it 39 percent that they that they make it in, um, and, and in about you know 20 ish percent or so that they that they win their own division. So I'm just low on them this year. I have the win total at seven and a half. In my simulation, I just don't think that they're going to be able to repeat. And they haven't been able to repeat. They've only gone to the playoffs 40% of their years that Kirk Cousins has been their quarterback. Yeah, fair enough. And, I mean, like, the Lions got better. The Packers, people don't know what the Packers were last year, right? Aaron Rodgers with the injured thumb. It, it, Jordan Love could – listen, it's not it's not not possible that Jordan Love comes out of nowhere and uh, plays replacement level value and brings that Green Bay Packers team to the top of that division. And then you could see easily see the D Detroit Lions finishing ahead of the Minnesota Vikings as well, just so by – process of elimination you could see that trickle down effect and uh, a potential path where the vikings very well could miss the playoffs um finally this is like listen this one's going to be a hot take and i love it because i i actually recently played their alt uh, win total unders um and we're going to talk about the philadelphia eagles isn't there 14 and 3 last year obviously the best team in the nfc uh their win total this year uh line 10 and a half uh over minus 179 under uh plus 150 I mean, listen, they're a good team. We're not saying that they're not a good team, but I think the case for them to miss the playoffs is quite compelling. So I'm going to let you uh, let you lay it out here. Yeah, that's a really good point uh, that you made, Jason. Like, we're not saying that they're bad, and we're not saying that they're not going to make the playoffs. What we're saying is is the values there for them uh, to possibly miss it. Because, look, they're favored against the field in a division that hasn't had a repeat winner in decades, right? So they're minus 138 on Pinnacle. Uh, as you said, win total 10 and a half. But you look at the defections, right? You look at Jonathan Gannon. He leaves, goes to Arizona. 
Um, you know, Shane Steichen, one of the better offensive coordinators in all of football. He's now the, the head coach in Indianapolis. They lose, you know, they lose a, a, an offensive lineman. They lose a defensive lineman uh, in Javon Hargrave, who went to San Francisco. And, you know, a lot of things that had to go right for them last year. James Bradbury, for example, brought him over from New York, is a streaky player. You got all the good things out of him last year. What happens this year? Uh, you know, are they able to stay healthy along the defensive line? Are they a lot, are they able to stay healthy at wide receiver? We know AJ Brown's a fabulous player, but he hasn't always played every single game for his team. So there's just a lot of things when you rely on a quarterback who's really, really good, but not in that kind of elite Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen uh, category. The things around you have to be perfect. They were a season ago. They made the playoffs. If they go perfect again, I think this team's going to make the Super Bowl again. But, you know, betting on perfection in the NFL um, with injuries and with with changes to coaching staffs is just a bad gamble. Yeah. So, I mean, what what would be the price that you'd have to uh, be willing to pay for the Eagles to not make the playoffs right now? I think I found somewhere that they're around around plus 300. Is that something that you'd be willing to make? Because, like, listen, personally, I got their win total under. I think it was nine and a half around the similar price. So, like, maybe that's a little too steep for me. But is there a price that you would look at to play the Philadelphia Eagles to miss the playoffs? I mean, when I look at when I look at market prices kind of, you know, widely available right now, you're looking at three to one in some places that that's probably worth a shot. Uh, just just again, because of all the things that can go wrong. I think everybody looks at the NFC and says, this is a bad conference. And I agree. But the problem is, is and, and this is this is a, a proverb throughout all of wagering in the NFL, especially in futures markets. Don't bet on teams because everybody else sucks. Right. You have to have a, a, a bear case for them. And I think the Eagles, like I said, are great. But do you really want to, if you look at these playoff markets, lay four dollars to win one uh, in in the in the S yes category? There, absolutely not. So I, I'm I'm just I'm looking at possibly three to one here. I'm also looking at when you look at this division, there's a very clean way to not maybe not to bet on the Eagles not to make the playoffs, but to bet on them not to repeat as division champions. And that's at Dallas at around two to one. It, it's very clean. And there's a, there's some two team divisions. In this in this NFC, the NFC West, and I think the NFC East with with uh, New York schedule being as bad as it is, and uh, the the Washington Commanders starting a fifth round pick in his second year as their quarterback. So you can even cleanly bet the you know the Eagles no to win the division by looking at Dallas. Yeah, I agree. And he, Dallas is sitting right now to win the NFC East at plus one ninety over at Pinnacle. And I mean, hey, the path is there. Brian Dable, he shocked us all. He looks like a really good coach. So I mean. All, all of that has to happen is the Dallas Cowboys do what we know that they're going to do. The Philadelphia Eagles stumble a bit and have the New York Giants just flip them with Brian Dayball's uh, a superior coaching ability. So uh, that wraps it up for today, guys. Remember, if you like this content, make sure you smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, uh, and hit that notification bell. It really helps us support the show. So without further ado, I'm producer Jason signing off with alongside Eric Eager. This has been For Progress right here on the Hammer Betting Network.